Welcome back to Tennessee Valley This Morning on WTMB. Again, we are glad you're with us on this Wednesday. We are now joined by Seema Switzel, and we thank you so much for being with us, Seema. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Well, Seema is welcome. the music teacher at Arnold Memorial Elementary School. School. And we're going to show you a video here in just a few minutes of uh, the garage band that was put together. <laughs> Tell yep. us a little bit about it's garbage. Garbage. It's garbage. Did I say garage? Right. Garbage. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's the garbage. name of the grant we called it Trash Can Land. Okay. Trash Can. And um, one of the things I'm very blessed um, to have been chosen as a recipient of a grant through the Bradley Cleveland Public Education Foundation, and this grant was singularly sponsored by Logan Thompson, wow. law firm here in town. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I got the idea last year when someone brought a trash can ban to our school and my kids just lit up like candles. Mm. And I thought, mm, that would be such a good thing for my kids to participate in. And my principal said, you know what we need to do for next year? She had the same idea, okay. Ms. Kelly Bender. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, there's confirmation. We're going to write a trash can ban grant. And of course, everything we do when we write a grant through Bradley Cleveland Public Education Foundation is that we have to connect it to data-driven based information. How is this going to help a child in the area of reading, language arts, science, social studies, or math? And so what I did is I connected it to math because in order to read complex rhythms, um, students have to have a really strong understanding of fractions and how to subdivide a bead, right. just like you would subdivide when you do a fraction and how to add those up together to make sure that you've got an entire measure right. of like four or a wow, measure of makes, three. So they really had to kind of learn it backwards and forwards and then understand how to play that. Sure. And so I started working on it in January with um, math problems and math facts. Then we moved on into reading it on the board in rhythms. Then we worked on to reading it just on place cards. Then we started looking at the actual music and it was very difficult music. I had two people that assisted me with writing this trash can band. Um, one of them was a um, clinician. His name is Brian Gallagher. Mm -hmm. Brian is the band director at Ocoee Middle School and he's a personal friend of mine. He agreed to help. And also Colby Burris, who is at Walker Valley High School and wrote the arrangement for us. And so he, I, I appealed to him to write something that elementary could, could grasp. And he wrote some things. I said, I want it to be challenging, though. I don't want it to be too simple. And he wrote some really fun, challenging music for our kids. And I'm telling you, they just rose to the occasion. It was amazing to see how focused they were, how much they enjoyed it, how much they um, really got into it. Yeah. And exactly. it was just fun. It was just absolute joy for them. It sounds like it. Jennifer, do you want to run that for us? Let us see that video. And so we've got a two-minute little clip here of the production that they put on Thursday <coughs> at the school. Uh, Jennifer was out there with a the camera and captured um, a little bit of what was going on. So if she'll get that lined up, she'll play it for us and we'll see how all of
look at you. And you just started, now you just started writing the grant in January, right? Well, or we, the I, music? I wrote the grant in um, September. Okay. And then received news about mid-October that we'd been awarded the grant. Okay. And we started working with kids in January. Mm, okay. No so, I, th they came a really long, that was some complicated stuff no there that, I mean, you know, I could see me, I would have been hitting the person's drum next to me and maybe somebody. They would have had, had no there. top on your drum. <laughs> That reminds me of that group Stomp. Yes, that and that, that kind of was that attitude. And, yeah. you know, we I was able to show the kids clips from YouTube of some other other um, trash can bands and show them some different things so they could kind of see what the end product was going to look like. And it really gave them something to shoot for, gave them vision right. yeah. uh, to exactly what they were going to go toward. And boy, did they ever come with. I mean, I was so, so proud of my students. Now, what age groups were that? That was the older that kids. Was that was fifth graders. Kids. But the beauty of a grant like this is that now I can start passing that down to the next group. The fourth graders oh, wow. okay. are now starting to work on it next year when those third graders come up to fourth graders. I'll start working with them as well because we'll just, the only thing we're going to need to reinvest in is another arrangement. Right. So right. it keeps, it's a grant that kind of keeps on giving. Yeah. And right. that's what I really like to do because it enthuses those other children to know that we're going to get to do that sure. too and it was just um musically it was wonderful it was it, it was a win-win situation they understood about math they were able to show that they were able to um be assessed by an audience like that and feel pride in their work sure. and so i'm really really excited about what this has done for my students sure. because we probably have the broadest um section of children of any school in the county sure. or city systems, um, we have, um, I, I know about 20 different countries represented in our school alone. Mm. Um, kids from Guatemala, kids from Honduras, kids from Brazil, kids from Mexico, um, children from China. Uh, we have uh, two little boys that are from Africa. Um, one is from Zimbabwe and the other one is the Republic of the Congo. We have a, just broad diversity in our students mm -hmm. and this is something that really helps our students connect. Yes. Sure you know, no matter um, what language they speak at home, no matter what, the th they all connect with that percussion. And mm -hmm. that's something that just really brings us together as a family. And I, I just love that. And to me, that's what music should be about. Mm -hmm. And it kind of crosses also um, uh, educational. We have some kids that are up there that are playing. They, they find it tremendously hard to do the academic work. But we're seeing them do this with ease. Yep. And, yeah. And so it kind of kind of levels the playing field in that respect too. So we just have seen what I would say basically say a lot of miracles for our kids mm, through this yeah. trash can band. Well that is and you're so enthusiastic you can tell she loves her job. Yes, exactly. um, we were out there uh, last year with, with another grant that she did mm -hmm. and that was that was amazing. You had um, the uh, Delsimer. Uh, yeah, the, the Delsimer. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes and they had made uh, for themselves, you guys had had done a class and had yes. made them personally for themselves, and then the guy that came and performed was an absolute. He was an, a winner. I mean, a national, a or international, international winner, winner Stephen right. Humphreys, and that gave our kids some real a real boost. And the beauty of that grant as well is we still have those dulcimers, and our students still play them. Right, Terrific. and so it gives them the opportunity. They pass those down to the next group of kids, and they can play those as well. It gives us twenty five string instruments to work with, and like. Music is such a beautiful thing because it does level the playing field. Um, there are, you know, a lot of kids are talented, but it allows them to shine in different areas. Mm -hmm. And it allows them, and hopefully that kind of confidence is going to kind of wash over into the academics because that's what we want. Right. We want to, to produce really strong academic students from our school. But music is just a piece of that puzzle. Sure it is. It's and, a piece and that, of that puzzle. That does give, because you do have a lot of, um, I, sometimes the, the more artistic a, a student is, I mean, we have an artistic son, so we had one that grew up with that, that it's not that they're not capable in the academics, it's just mm -hmm. that it's just not their cup of tea. They'd rather right. make music or they'd rather be creative, draw. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a very, very talented son, and, and um, but, you know, the academics, he was as bright as he could be. That wasn't it. But he really could shine in the areas that he was at. And that gave him some self-confidence in that because, you know, it was kind of hard for him to sit through a lecture. And, and I agree with that because, you know, we talk a lot about graduation rate. But I'm telling you, there are a lot of kids that stay in school because of the arts. Right. They stay in school because they want to be in band or they stay in school because they want to be in that drama production or they want to, um, to draw and have art. That's what connects them 
yeah. to school and keeps them there to graduate. That's what we want for our kids. Mm -hmm. We want our kids to know that there's something out there beyond even even out high school. We we take our kids to Lee University every year so they can see that they can go on to college. We try mm -hmm. to implant that in them early because yeah. we really want our kids to be successful in life. That's the goal. Absolutely. And so this is learning cooperation. Um, they're learning all kinds of different things, teamwork, and those are life skills. Oh, yeah. And it's not just music. We're just gonna send you over there, Joe. Let well, you spend a little no, bit over say, there. We'll get you. We'll get you some teamwork. Kudos, kudos to you, though, and all the teachers that that see that vision and and, and then, of course, put it into uh, uh, practice uh, and getting the grant, the whole thing. Well, it's, I think that's wonderful. Well, I appreciate that, but we have great kids, and they deserve it. And what's more, we really, really thank the Bradley Cleveland Public Education Foundation and Logan Thompson because they caught the vision yeah. for what we were trying to do for our students and 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 helped us in turn helped us help that happen for sure. our students and so you know I know that the grant writing is is laborious it's about 20 hours worth of work but it's so worth it when you see the the end result mm -hmm. it's so worth it and that money is available to us through them and I'm thankful for that uh, because I know that we can make a difference for our children for our students and that's the most important thing to me well how many how many students do you have in the program when <laughs> we saw a lot up there well I that. have about 70 in wow. fifth grade and so that's a great thing I've got 60 coming up next week that are starting in fourth grade and so you know when you start thinking about how many kids will feed through the program mm -hmm. as they grow from kindergarten to fifth grade we have about 400 students <laughs> under that roof and so you know that's a difference yeah, for them is. and hopefully they're going to take what they're learning these fifth graders to the middle school and they're going to apply that as they get involved in things like band and chorus and the musical. They have a sixth grader in the, in the Cleveland Middle School program. Fantastic people over there that are willing to help shape their futures. And I think that's really important to see that we're that connection now, but we're feeding them through the process of being successful later on in life. Absolutely. And, you know, we see, like I said, we see graduation as the goal. Right. And that's part of what we do. You know, it's part. It's got to be part of what our thinking process. Uh, as educators, we have right. to think in that process, and and I really think that's what Cleveland City Schools speaks about when they say every child, every day, yeah, right. is giving every child every day the ability to be successful. This was a great way for me to buy into mm -hmm. that. Is to say, I'm going to write this grant, let my kids who may not be successful in other areas become extremely successful and feel the the pride in that. I. I when I show my children the video of their hard work, when they've done a program like that, that's where my reward comes sure, in, to sure. see their faces oh, yeah, light up. Oh, yeah, they'll be tickled to death. Oh. Especially, we'll, we'll put that, I'll have Jennifer to put the whole thing in entirety. If we can get it up, I think it'll go up on YouTube without a problem. Yeah. The whole thing, it takes a little while to get the, the bigger ones, but she can put that whole, and they can just watch themselves and tell everybody they're on YouTube. And it's a wonderful <laughs> video for them. Thank you. Well, yeah, and, and, and I think a, everybody that they know can, can take a look at it as well. And I think a great thing, it's kind of like, and, and I always attribute everything to athletics, but it's kind of like the athletics part of school it's the music part is like a melting pot you get kids from this part of town kids from this part of town mm -hmm. and they all come together in one accord uh, to make mm -hmm. everything to make music to make, to make music. beautiful music <laughs> well and it's a proven fact there's so many statistics out there that show that kids who are involved in the art do better all the way through and even uh, this is one of the facts that I'm always quoting but 66 percent of people who get into medical school are musically inclined Okay. and have music lessons and things like that because it develops parts of the brain. You have to use both sides of the brain to do mm -hmm. something like right. this. And it develops that creativity and thinking outside the box and those kind of things. But only 33% have our only science background. So that shows you that double the amount of kids that get into medical school have that musical background, no which really helps the brain to develop in a different way. And we start that in pre-K. Hmm. Start working with them in pre-K and kindergarten and starting to get them thinking in that direction. And then we see a difference. We see a difference. And so I'm, I love what I do. I'm very passionate about it because I know I'm making a difference for children's <coughs> lives. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, of course, like you said, and all the kids that are involved in it now will carry it on. Most of them. Is there a uh, percentage of kids that are in, in the arts early that keep keep it going all the way through? Or um, Yes, there is. There's a strong percentage. In fact, the, uh, the statistics show that kids who are involved earlier in the arts usually continue, particularly if it gives them that feeling of success and confidence, yeah. because that's what you're building in young, young children, is success and confidence. Because after, you know, and, you know, trying something new is scary. 
It's scary for adults. Mm -hmm. But when you convince them that they can and just take them in baby steps and keep, you know, helping them kind of scaffold it so that they, they're finding success all along, along the way, boy, it makes such a difference. Such a difference. And, and I love that. I love to watch them from kindergarten all the way through fifth grade and, you know, watch them leave us and I keep up with them in middle school. That's just a real thing for me. I love the kids and I want to see them be successful. <coughs> I'm about to get choked. Oh. <laughs> it's just tickling my eyes. are starting to water. Well, well so we, we thank you for being with thank us. Thank you for week. having me. And I want to say thank you once again, Bradley Cleveland Public yes, Education Foundation, my principal, Kelly Bender, um, just those kind of people. You can't do it without that kind of support. And I'm so grateful for that and grateful for the wonderful students at Arnold. They're just amazing kids. And, um, you know, I'm just thankful every day. Yeah. Well, you call us, you know, like you did this time. We, we were uh, privileged to, to be put in touch with you last year when you had the grant. So when you have something else, you call us and we'll be out there. Because it's really will. a great, Thank you. it's a great thing that they're doing out there at Arnold. And uh, and the passion is absolutely obvious. And, and you know, that's what, ha that the sad thing is, is when things get bad and, and cuts have to be made, that in education, it tends to be the arts that, that are the first things to get cut. That, you know, they'll keep athletics and, of course, academics, but the arts tend to get cut. So clearly. Cleveland has a great support system yes. for the arts here. Yes. Um, we have a great group of people in the, in the city and the county as well. And so we just thank you for keeping that going on and that you're passionate for it and that you understand the importance of it. And so we appreciate you being here today. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Seema Schwartzel of Arnold Memorial, Memorial <laughs> Elementary School. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. All right, we're going to be back with more of Tennessee Valley this morning. We've got Ron Moore in the house. Talk about uh, some Bradley County history on the way right after this. Please stay tuned.